So uh, I want to start by thanking uh, Chip and his team and uh, facilities, Mike Schmidt and, and folks who worked so hard um, over the, uh, the winter storm with the, <laughs> the, 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 the wind and then the snow and uh, being great communicators. And I really appreciate that. So thank you, Chip and team, uh, for helping us out along the way and helping all, all the kids in, in Rochester. Uh, next, this doesn't work. All right, here we go. I just want to give an update to the board on exam preparation for the families. Uh, we are approaching exam season for grades six through eight at East, and, um, and just it's really important that our kids get rest and they attend. Uh, we are doing a couple events to get kids uh, to sleep at night, energized, uh, to prepare for the exams. Although there's a lot of debate around the validity and the importance of those state assessments, they are assessments that we must um, we must give, and we encourage our students to do their best. So we're asking our parents to to really get their kids to bed on time. And um, to get them to school so we can have participation rates up and we can see what our students are able to do relative to the rest of the kids in the state. This past week, we had a uh, visit by the New York Education Department, and they took a look at our family and community engagement, as well as our classrooms in the lower and upper schools. Uh, it was a very productive um, discussion and visit. Uh, we got some uh, really positive feedback, and I look forward to their, um, their formal written report. We're also working with the uh, State Education Department on finishing and finalizing and accepting uh, our, the latest grant proposal that was submitted. And as I mentioned last board meeting, once that, uh, once that grant is uh, approved, you'll see an increase in professional development, um, opportunities, and uh, improvements to the building. There was a question um, that was asked about opening the professional development up to others and, uh, throughout the district. I just want to say that um, our teachers at East have participated in PD throughout the district. And uh, individuals from other district schools have already been at East. So our PD is definitely open. Um, there's no um, closed doors there. And we continue to expand those opportunities for those who are interested in, in learning with, uh, with, with our staff. Um, another update that's happening, hopefully in September 2018, uh, we're forming uh, a partnership with uh, Eastman Institute of Oral Health to convert what my, my office currently is into a dental suite. Um, this is to expand the community schools model and hub. We hope to have four dental chairs at East to service our students and eventually our community. In the meantime, uh, as that plan evolves, the Smile Mobile will begin uh, to provide service to students at East beginning next month and continue until an actual lab is, um, is, is created in the beginning of the school year of 2018. This was a priority for us. We did a, uh, we um, scanned our students in grades six through eight last year and realized that about 57% had some type of oral um, health issues. Um, the national average for urban uh, youth is about 20%. So we were twice the number um, nationally and it was important that we gave our kids an opportunity to have um, oral health as an opportunity or offering to them. And we look forward to having that partnership expand um, formally in 2018, but the small bill will begin uh, soon. Um, we continue to look at the budget presentations that we presented on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week and looking for efficiencies, and we just ask the community to be patient through that process. There's a lot of moving parts, as you can imagine, as we're de developing master schedules and um, de um, deciding on critical needs. And as that process takes shape, I'm sure it's the same for, uh, for Barbara and her team, it's going to be an evolving process, and we hope to um, have a, a, a plan that reflects the needs of the students first um, and um, also the ability for our staff to do um, the, the best they can um, in our schools. Exciting event, uh, June 1st and 2nd, uh, National Speaker Pedro Nogueira will be here at, at East. Um, he is coming on Thursday night for a public forum, which is open to all, beginning at 6 uh, p.m. And on uh, June 2nd, he will be uh, delivering a, a half-day session with our staff. Um, this is being sponsored by uh, the University of Rochester's uh, Center for Urban Education Success. Of course, all of uh, um, the uh, cabinet is invited and the board, we encourage you to attend. Pedro was, was here, um, I think, two years ago for the Black Boys Initiative. Um, he's going to spend two days with us, and there'll be more announcements uh, made to the community, but I wanted to make sure the board heard it first. And again, we invite um, all, who, all who want to attend on Thursday, uh, June 1st at 6 p.m. at East. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelms. Appreciate that. Um, as we transition to any questions for Dr. Nelms? Well, 
not not uh, for Dr. Nelms, but he brought up a point that I wanted to, uh, this came from the community, and um, uh, Superintendent Dean Williams, I ask you about it. There is um, discussion in the community that says that um, 10,000 of our students fa have failed uh, these exams, and so uh, is, is there something that we're going to do in order to uh, reduce the number of failures on these state exams. That's the, that's the statement, that's the issue that's out in the community now that I'm hearing that there are, we, the district, um, 10,000 of the district students failed on those state um, exams. Um, is there a way that we can address that to satisfy members in the community that we're going to uh, significantly reduce uh, this numbers of students who are failing exams. So, so I think that and, um, Barb and I have a, the same um, kind of idea around how to address that. I think it starts with having viable curriculum. And I would say that curricular alignment, that's where a lot of the professional development funding has gone in the first two years of the EPO, is developing curriculum that's aligned to the assessments. Now, the assessments are based on a set of standards. And sometimes the state um, tests on different standards, different years. But the best thing we can do is to make sure that the curriculum is aligned and then make sure that the teaching and learning um, is rigorous enough to address those standards. So I don't know the number 10,000, but I will tell you that we have a lot of students uh, at East. Last year, I think 98% came in scoring a one or two on the assessments, and that would have been considered failing. Is that some data that we can get, yeah. uh, Madam Superintendent, and from East High School about how many students are failing the exams? Mm -hmm. All, right. Yeah, that's, that's All right, thank you. Yep. Um, as we transition to um, 